did have such an anticipation of being with you. Rather like looking forward to a refreshing drink <laughs> of a unique flavour and quality that we encountered God in such a unique way, Lord, with you. And we bless that on, on your church and your life. And that's what I believe the Lord is speaking into today. It's a word from Exodus chapter 15 and verse 27. It's very simple. Just one sentence that I want to speak from today. It says, Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells of water and seventy palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. So we have this single verse, a snapshot. One small event in the wilderness journeys of Israel. But I believe this is the landing point for the Holy Spirit for you today. In essence, it's very simply the story of an arrival. An arrival. And that's the declaration of the Lord over you individually and as a church. Arrival day in the Spirit of God. Arrival day. Not only today, but it's the season that you're in. <coughs> so I'm here to announce your arrival. When the Lord says, Gateway to Glory, I have an appointment with you at the Oasis. At the Oasis. Of course, the background of this story, when you read, look back over the whole of Exodus 15, is um, Moses is recounting the wilderness journeys of the Israelites. It starts with the Red Sea. You remember the Red Sea crossing and the Egyptians were pursuing them and they crossed on dry land. And it was a, a miracle time of deliverance. And then, of course, they, they stopped at a place called Marah, which it was a place where there was this bitter spring. Now, they've been journeying. There's a bitter spring. And they're like, we need something to drink. But then Moses threw a branch under the instruction of God. He threw a branch into the bitter waters and those bitter waters became fresh. Amen. Speaking of salvation, the branch, of course, is the cross of Jesus Christ. So full of symbolism. And so they move on from there. And in this verse, in this day, in this moment, in this hour, they arrive at Elam, or Elim, if you're pronouncing it the Hebrew way, but I'll stick to Elam because this is what we know. They're arriving at Elam. So why is Moses kind of recounting all these particular places? Well, firstly because God commanded him to. We, we learn in Numbers, God commanded Moses to note down the places where they launched out from. And Elam was one of those places. Um, the second reason was because these weren't just physical places that they were going. These were symbolic places. There was a meaning that's for us today, as the Apostle Paul reminds us in, uh, in 1 Corinthians in chapter 10. That these things were written for our benefit. And so I declare this to you today. It's an Elam moment for you. It's an oasis encounter. So this arrival day, the day that they arrive at Elam, the, the day that's in this verse here, where they arrive at, for the very first time, how does that day start? The day starts as it has for numerous days where they've, since they've set out from Egypt. We know that they, were, they had God's presence with them. They had the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Imagine that. Imagine that right now the cloud of the Lord's presence is in the house. Because he is. Because he's with you. And where you go, the presence of God goes. And the fire of his presence and we learn in Exodus 40, so they're camping, they're camping, they're going, and they're going in their tents. 
we learn that what would happen in these journeys is that whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the place of worship, and they would see the cloud lifting, the people would set out on their journey because that was the sign. God was on the move. And so they would kind of pull up their tent pegs and get out on the road. But if the cloud didn't rise, then they wouldn't set out. They'd stay in that encampment. Now that's a journey of faith, right? So how did that day start? As every other day did. The first thing on everyone's mind is, what is the cloud doing? What is the presence of God doing? At dawn, children picking out of the tents, out of the flats of the tents, to see what the cloud was up to that day. And everyone is looking for that sign that perhaps today is a day that the cloud has lifted and it's time for us to break camp and to move on. That is anticipation. That is you. So connected to the presence of God that this is your heart, this is your life, that you are in pursuit of Him, that where God is going, you want to be. You know, this is obedience. Sometimes we think, you know, to obey God is not a word that's very popular in our culture today, is it? But obedience to God is, is a joy. It's not a duty. It's to be a delight. Because what it is, it's our Father inviting us to join Him in what He's doing. And He's good. So when He looks for you to obey Him in some manner, it's an invitation to be where He is and where His presence is and to be with what he is up to. And oh, I, I speak that over to you today, such an anticipation for the presence of God that he's increasing that sense. It's like Eugene Peterson, if anyone's seen um, the message um, version of the Bible. His interpretation, we'll call it that, of Romans in chapter 8 and the verses 15 and 16 in the message and he says, this resurrection life that you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant. Greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we are. He is your father, and you are his son, his daughter. So you can enter this day, this arrival day, this season, because God has gone before you and he's here. You're arriving at Elam on an arrival day to a divine encounter where God has a refreshing for you. Father, I thank you right now that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is here in this place. This is a day and a time for refreshing. This is a day of the moving of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that your grace is for every person right here and right now in Jesus' name for a divine encounter. You see, one verse, three standout things in this verse. They come to Elam with this 12 wells of water, 70 palm trees in the camp. Three features that I want to clear over you about the move of God for you right now. First one, 12 wells of water. And how amazing that is. You see, 12 tribes of Israel arrive at a place where there are 12 wells of water. How much of a God set up is that? And the Lord wants you to know He's provided for you. He didn't just provide for the nation, He provided for the tribes. He provides for your family. He says, I have a well for you, personally, and in your families, to drink from. So the 12 wells of water, 12 springs, so precise. 
He orchestrates this and he wants you to know you're in the move of God, you're in the timing of God, you're here by divine appointment. This is a sign moment. And I can tell you that for an absolute surety today that this is a sign moment. I actually thought we were going to be ministering here a few weeks ago. And uh, I got mixed up. So I was expecting to come back in June, but when I contacted Pastor Salisi, um, I realized I'd got the dates wrong. And uh, he said, well, are you available for July the 16th? Yeah, this is a text message. So I go to look at my calendar for July the 16th. And it says this. Now, note that I had prepared this message. I was ready to go. And it's a brand new message. I've never preached from this scripture before like this. This is brand new and it was a word for you. God's birthing through you. And um, the Holy Spirit, just as I was going through it, it came, came to this one phrase, arrival day. This is the word he's bringing, arrival day. So, Pastor says to you, uh, July the 16th, so I go and look at my calendar and to see what's on it. And what it says is, anniversary of arrival in Australia. Because it's our anniversary that we celebrate every year at our arrival day. I was shocked. I was stunned. I knew that the Lord had set up a divine appointment. And the other thing I knew, this is the grace of God, that this word is for my family as well as yours. This word about our arrival day. So here we are, 21 years today, of traveling from Auckland to um, Melbourne. Like, how amazing is that? And you've traveled from Auckland. We bless this Auckland church in the name of Jesus. Just as we traveled from Auckland to Melbourne all of those years ago, Father, we thank you for doing something so significant in Gateway to Glory. Orchestration. So, a sign moment. But when we speak of provision, I know we often think of provision in terms of tangibles of finance, and I believe the Lord is, is ministering to you in this area. What an amazing word for the giving today. That was just awesome. I really think it's great fun. Um, but I also want to speak over you the intangibles, the wisdom of God, the enthusiasm of the Holy Spirit, the life of peace, provision of peace in Jesus' name. Because the Bible speaks of a, um, a believer who trusts God being like the tree planted by the waters. And uh, it says, you won't be worried by long months of drought. For those of you who've been uh, struggling with the increasing cost of living, especially during this winter time, I just speak over you the warmth and grace, the economy of the kingdom of God. Because we know that the economy of the kingdom doesn't operate in the same way as the economy of the world. And blessed are you, you are like a tree planted alongside the water. Second feature that stands out in the arrival day is the 70 palm trees. What was really amazing is that word Elam is in the Hebrew, that word means palms. So here we have a place that's named for its standout feature, right? The name Elam means palms, or if you go on the root word, it means multiplied strength. And this is where the Lord is speaking over you. Because just as the standout feature of Elam was the palm trees, the Lord says, and, and, and that Elam means multiplied strength. That's because palm and strength is the same. This is your identity. You are the strong ones. If you wonder sometimes why it feels like you're under attack in the area of your strength, that's because that's your identity. And the Lord has called you to be strong like the palm trees 
And here there were 70 palm trees, an interesting 70 elders in Israel. Again, it's just incredible, the, the connection of everything in the Bible. You know how symbols um, go with landmarks? Um, has anyone driven past the big koala in, here in uh, Victoria somewhere on the <laughs> to and then there's apparently a giant prawn somewhere. Oh, I mean, where is it? Uh, a Bellina's big prawn, a giant lobster in South Australia called Larry the Lobster, <laughs> and so on. You see, these kind of emblems declare this is what we're known for. This is what we're about. You will be known for the cloud of God. You will be known for the presence of God. In New Zealand, we used to go through Pyro a, a, a lot, and uh, of course, that little place was known for the giant bottle of Alan P that stood in the township. Who else remembers world famous in New Zealand? I still love it, I find that in Coles. <laughs> but I'll get my little tin of Alan P. I sat there on my, on my birthday with a bottle of Alan P in front of me. That was my drink of choice on the day. It speaks to my Kiwi identity. <laughs> so the palm tree speaks to your identity and it has features. Firstly, as the name implies, it means strength. I want to declare strength over you today. Two young men standing by the doors over there. Yes, turning around. In the dark jackets, one like the green and the pink. I want to declare over you strength in the house of God. You're not only palm trees in the house. Of God, you're like pillars in the house of God. As you stand strong, there is something significant that's happening even in the building and the fabric of the place because God has appointed you to be strong. And uh, I bless that on you. You know, there's something by simply standing in the presence of God, something significant is happening. So they're known for strength and resilience. The palm tree grows to great heights, reaching up to 75 feet or 23 meters and can last over 100 years. It's known for standing strong even to an old age. And I want to clear over some of you who would feel like you're getting on in years. <laughs> Bless me, God. God says, fruitful even into all age. That's the second feature of palm trees. Fruitful. Known for their great clusters of dates, the sweet and nutritious fruit, even into old age. This is a church for every generation. This is your belonging place. This is homecoming. So abundant fruitfulness, Deuteronomy 33, 25, as your days, so shall your strength be. I'm looking at Pastor Sanisi here. God bless you, Lisa. This, Tina, yes. God's grace is with you. As your days, so shall you serve me. Nothing is wasted on the palm trees. It was amazing how every part of it was useful. Like the leaves, you know, for crafts, for creating bags, for roofs, the, um, you know, like even the camels, food <laughs> from, from that. And um, the seeds produced food for the camels. And so here we have this place that reminds us that God wastes nothing. God wastes nothing. Every part of your life, even that which has been difficult, even in the trial, says God works all things together for good. He loves you. And that which even seemed to feel like it had been a waste in former times, the Lord says, I'm redeeming that in your life. And he is using all things for good. Palm trees are testimony of praise associated with victory, salvation, used when they wave to the palm branches 
um, as a symbol of victory, to honor dignitaries when they came into town back in those days. Remember, Jesus was welcomed with the waving of the palm branch. It's kind of like when we lift our hands and praise, you know, this surrender of worship, but then there's the praise. It's like a gesture that you can't help but make. It's like reminiscent of the palm branches. And this is you. You'll be known as a center for praise. Known as a center of testimony of praise. And here, kind of in the house, the palm tree thrives when firmly established. Be planted in the house. Be gathered together. Because the Lord's word over you today with Elam, which means palms, which means multiplied strength, is there is strength in the gathering. And, uh, and, and I believe there's even more to be gathered. Perhaps some who are watching online, and the Lord is ministering to you to, to not hold back from the gathering because there's multiplied strength here. So he's replenishing you at the place of the wells and the streets. He's reminding you of your identity at the place of the palms. And number three, they kept by the waters. The third feature is the tents, the tent pegs. So you can arrive somewhere, but you must put, must put down the tent pegs to stay. And Elam wasn't just a stage of the journey. It was symbolic of the whole of putting down your tent pegs in a place where God will cause you to thrive. Of putting down your tent pegs at a place where God is bringing a replenishing move of His Spirit. It was a picture of how they were to live, and not only that, in the gathering, but also in the Spirit-filled life. Just as the Red Sea symbolized the deliverance and the salvation, you see the healing covenant at Merah. Here at Elam, you see life from the Holy Spirit. And God has a move of the Holy Spirit that's unique to you. And you are known for it. And you will be even more. And you are to be as an oasis, as known for the refreshing that you bring, known for the life that you give. So they moved from Merah, and they've just that's where they've just come from. What a contrast. Here, the waters were better, and of course they had this move of God. And here, the waters are fresh. And Merah represented that work. But they had to keep on moving. What an amazing move of God that they had experienced. But the cloud of God was moving. So being willing to pull up the tent pegs in those times. Because what do the tent pegs speak of seasons? And the palm trees speak of generations. And God has both. And he says, honor the times and the seasons where there seems to be things that are passing, where there seems to be things that are temporary, the times when I'm moving you and it's not comfortable. The Lord says, I am with you in the moving. He says, honor the times and you will see the generations and you will win the generations and you will see the generations rise up. So as I close this word, what, what is the ultimate arrival day? The ultimate arrival day, there is one to come, but I see an arrival day that happens in the Gospels where Jesus came. And then we see an arrival day in the book of Acts where the Holy Spirit came to the church. Arrival. Not only our arrival, but God is doing something where he is arriving on the scene in a significant way. We read Acts 2, chap chapter 2, verses 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. 
that filled the whole house where they were sitting. Arrival day. Arrival day. Let's stand together and welcome this move of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand together in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 